previously on Port Charles. You and me, we're going to have a little baby. Isn't it wonderful? I'm very happy. Oh, Doc. Is it possible that you made an improper decision? I didn't decision? make an improper decision. Don't, don't you ever speak to me like that. I am warning you. Don't let your feelings get away from you in front of that review board. This man is my father. Let's get VP and Pulse. Now, please. I'm leaving Port Charles tomorrow. The young man with her is Joe Scanlon. He will not be starting tomorrow. He's on suspension. Paging Dr. Ramsey. I'm still here. Still thinking about last night. Before or after you showed up in a trench coat and a teddy? <laughs> Before, Sally. Do you want to talk about it? Uh, well, I told you most of what happened. Rejected the intern, gone psycho, held us at gunpoint. Killed one person, injured another. He did, however, provide champagne. Domestic, unfortunately. How did you finally get him? Karen Wexler, one of my erstwhile colleagues, distracted the guy with a striptease. <laughs> what? <laughs> I know, the whole thing sounds like a bachelor party for a disgruntled postal worker. Well, it had to be more than that. Who actually tackled him? It was you, wasn't it? Oh, my God, you saved all those people, Chris? You're a hero. Well, I don't actually like to use the word hero, but... There's paperwork on Scott Baldwin. I need you, John Hancock's admitting resident. If there's nothing else. You were with Dr. Quartermain just now, right? So? Well, it's none of my business, but did I hear him right? He wants you to take over the internship program? Yeah, you're right. It's none of your business. Excuse me. Well, I was just thinking, that's, uh, it's a hell of a way to get a promotion, huh? Scanlon, I suppose it would be polite to thank you for whatever it is you're trying to say. But at work, I'm not polite. I get my job done. And my new job has nothing to do with getting your brother off suspension. Tell Joe to plead his case with the review board, not with me. Karen, cut and run is not the answer here. We haven't even started yet. You can't leave. Coming back to Port Charles was a huge mistake. There are other places I could have gone, but I thought that... Karen, I know you came back for a lot of different reasons. Thank you. And I want you to stay. We're in the right house, aren't we? Yeah, though right is, I think it's better than right. It was just so weird. When I left here yesterday, you know, this was just all the same to me. It was wonderful, lovely. But now, I walk in this place knowing that there's this little baby growing inside of me, this whole little person. I don't know, it, it just changes everything. I'm looking at this, the both of us. Does that include me? Oh, Doc. For the three of us. <laughs> Look at this room. It's going to be good. I mean, it's sunny and it's safe and... Oh, boy. If you're going to faint, I want you sitting down. No. No, Doc, I'm okay. I just had this flash of Scott and Serena. Don't you think it's a little bit odd that we still haven't heard anything from them? I don't think Scott Baldwin feels the need to keep us informed. No, and it's not that. I, I don't think it's that. Would you, would you mind if I just called Lee and Gail? Go ahead. <laughs> Thank you. Something just... It, do, it doesn't feel right. Oh, hello. Um, hi, M my name is Ms. Lucy Coe. I'm a friend. Uh, sorry to call so early. Who is this? Oh, hi. It's a neighbor. Um, yeah, no, I, I, I'm sorry to bother you. I was just wondering if Serena was there with you. What? Oh, my God. No, no, I, I don't have a message. What's wrong? Scott couldn't have called us even if he wanted to. He's in the hospital. He was hit by a car and he's in surgery. What? What about Serena? 
Nobody knows where she is. Doesn't make sense. Didn't Lee tell Scott his daughter was with them? I gotta get to the hospital. No, no, no. Listen, it's been a rough night, and you need to take care of yourself before you run off and try to save the Baldwins. I'm not trying to save the Baldwins. I, I know what Scott has done, but he is still my pal. Look, it's possible that the neighbor was confused. Maybe Lee and Gail took Serena with No, them. no, Doc, that's the point. The neighbor was supposed to stay by the phone in case there was any word about Serena. All right, I know it's hard, but would you please try and rest for five minutes? Four. Four. Matt, hey. Oh, Mac. Thank God you're here. Are you guys okay? Oh, yeah. sure. Incarceration was great fun. Look, I can't tell you just how upset I am at Scotty and the FBI. They didn't have one shred of real evidence that you kidnapped Serena. You found Serena, right? I didn't know she was still missing. It's probably more accurate to say that we suspect she's still missing. Suspects. That, that's what we need, Mac. Look, I'd love to ask Essie to stay and have a donut or something, but you have to go out there and find her. We need suspects. Officially, it's out of my hands now. Out of your hands? What do you mean? You are the police commissioner. I was the police commissioner. I've been fired. <sighs> After a night like this, making a decision that is going to affect the rest of your life is impossible. Now your father's in surgery. You get through that. And we'll talk about bailing, okay? <sighs> My father, God, I have never even said that before. I didn't even know Scott. He left town before I got a chance to know him. And then all of a sudden, he's smacked by a car, and I'm doing triage on the guy. I barely know him. And yet, I'm signing consent forms for major surgery like listen, that's okay listen, because I, he's my father? Listen to me. You will have time to figure it all out later. I promise you. For now, Scott was just lucky you were there when he got hit. I was lucky you were there when Greg Cooper was holding a gun on us. Listen to me. Face it, Karen. Saving lives comes naturally with well, you. Oh, yeah. Whether in scrubs or G-string, Karen Wexler always saves the day. Hey, it's called brilliance under pressure. Is this an act? You being such a nice guy. Hey, you ready to go, buddy? Um, no, you can go ahead and take off. I'm going to uh, stay here and see how Scott Baldwin's doing. No problem. Um, Joe, can I have a word with you? Sure. So, what's up? What's up is people are talking about bouncing you out of your internship. Now, what I want to know is how come I didn't hear from you? Now, I could have gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with the guy, but outthinking him was a much smarter strategy. Oh, I would have been way too scared to think straight. No, no, no. See, Cooper would have loved that. I mean, uh, scum like this, they thrive on the fear in their victims. And I simply refused to back down. Mm. You ready for another? Chris, it's, it's almost morning. Oh, and it's been too long since we had our last bottle. I'll be right back. <sighs> Julie Morris. Are you spying on me? No. Then what were you doing? I wasn't going through your things. I wouldn't do that. I just thought I'd hang up your suit. It's so expensive. And I just saw the file. Sure. Sure. Are you mad at me? Oh, no. How could I be mad at you? <laughs> but you know something? I am kind of beat. It's been a long night, so, uh, thanks for the memories. I don't want your money. It's for the cab. Look, I can drive you if you like. No. What I want to know is what just happened here. Well, we had an incredible night, and 
Now it's over. All over? I'll call you. Chris, take care. And uh, good luck on that internship. Oh, I don't need luck, baby. To you, Dr. Julie Morris. Quartermain Tab Burgess to replace Falk as chief resident. Good for her, so what? So convince her you're sorry about shooting your mouth off tonight. You, you, you've been through a lot. Tell Frank, her you were worried about Karen. Frank, so stop trying to fix everything. Whatever happens, happens. I don't want to talk about this anymore. We're not through, Joseph, not by a long shot. I care if you don't. Yeah, well, what I care about, Frank, is doing this thing my way. Go to bed. No, Mom, I'm fine. I love you. I, I, I gotta go, okay? All right, I love you too. Bye-bye. When do kids become parents to their parents? I guess when the kids have no choice. How's your mom? She's sober. I didn't mean it that way. I know, but it's uh, the polite way people ask, you know, is she all right? I'm used to it. I'm sorry. She'll probably go through five pots of coffee before she gets to a meeting. Thank God for the meetings. I'm glad she's all right. When you knew me as a kid, I was spending all my time trying to convince people that she wasn't a lush. But they knew, didn't they? It's a small town. I knew your dad was a drinker. When you have an alcoholic for a mother, it's not hard to recognize the signs in other people. That's so funny. So a lot of people came to his funeral. But not one of them tried stopping him from getting behind the wheel. I didn't even know he died and, until Cooper read your personnel file to everyone. And he had it all there, didn't he? We messed up a little detail in my life. I guess I'm not the only one that feels exposed from tonight. After tonight, this entire place is one giant raw nerve. No one's ever going to be the same. This happened to you because of the Dorman case, didn't it? I arrested Dorman without evidence, pure and simple. Rules are rules. But I'll tell you, if I had to do it again, I would do it exactly the same way. Fortunately for Serena, I'm going freelance. I will do everything to find her. Thank you so much. Listen, I know you can't understand the things that Scott has done, but you have to find her because she really is just like a child of my own. You need to get some rest and take care of yourself. I know, I know, I will. Listen, listen, do you have uh, Scotty's number in Canada? I just might go up there to dig around. I do, um, I'll get it. Okay. Flying to Canada? Yeah, well, there's an old saying. If you want to find a live body, you piece it together one bone at a time. Getting can seems to agree with you. I'm starting to agree with you, Kevin. I've got it. It's right here. Listen, Mac, will you do me a favor and lock up? Lucy and I need to go somewhere. Where are we going? You really need to see Scott, don't you? I guess I'm not the only one who's psychic. Well, let's just say I feel more connected to you. <sighs> see you later, Mac. Mac? Joe Scanlon, M.D., Kevin, Dr. Kevin Collins. Hi. Scanlon, you have a brother named Frank? Yeah. I met him last night. He's a good man. I I'm sorry, I 
you didn't mention what your connection to Scott was. I'm his daughter. His daughter? Well, I guess Lee was referring to you when he called. We thought he meant Serena. Serena, I know. He was rushing out to try to find her when he got hit. How did you know that Lee called Scott? Well, when we got out of the hospital ourselves, we spent most of the night convincing the authorities and Scott that my friend and I weren't responsible for Serena's disappearance. Your friend? You mean Lucy? Right. So they still don't know where Serena is? A lot of concerned people are following some leads, but so far nothing's solved. That poor kid. She must be scared out of her mind. Who's going to help her now? Scott, I uh, bet you're in a lot of pain. If you weren't, I certainly would like to inflict some on you. What were you thinking? What were you thinking, having me arrested on kidnapping charges? You know, I remember so well the look on your face the night Serena came into the world and you held her in your arms and saw that little girl for the first time. Listen, we delivered her together, you and me, all alone, just us. We brought her into this world, so why would you ever think that I would take her away from you or do anything to hurt her. I wouldn't. Listen, we're going to get her back. Mac, Kevin, and I, we'll find her. And what you have to do is you have to just get better and get out of here. And then we'll all put this behind us and be the very, very best of pals. <laughs> okay? Deal. Man, work it. Go slow. Hello? Julie. This is Chris. Oh, hey. How are you feeling? Oh, okay, considering. I just called to ask you the same thing. I'm all right. Okay, that was a lie. Actually, I'm kind of freaking out. I couldn't sleep. Nightmares. You too? Look, I didn't mean to bother you. I just wanted to talk to someone. I'm glad you called me. Me too. Back again? Yeah, how's she doing? Well, we'll know more when the anesthesia wears off. A uh, slight fever, but we've already started antibiotics. I'm a friend of the family. Do you mind if I... Five minutes, okay? Thanks. How you doing, gorgeous? Please come back to us, Mrs. Audrey. Could you do that for me? For all the people who love you, including Joe. You mean a lot to him. He tried to save your life, but he could use your help. All you have to do is wake up. All you have to do is live. Is he okay? No. Well, I mean, he, I guess he's not any worse. He just didn't wake up. But my pal Scott is a fighter. He's going to be okay. We gather that Lee met Karen when he said that Scott's daughter was with them. Oh, my gosh. That's right. You are his daughter. Yeah. <sighs> well, you know, I do see um, some sort of something like him behind your eyes, I think. <laughs> Thanks, I guess. Uh, Matt called. He's on his way to Canada, up to Scott's place. Hopefully, he'll dig up something on Serena up there. That's great. Uh, listen, um, I know how difficult and weird and hard this is for you. I mean, for lots of different reasons. So, we will try and keep you posted if you could try and do the same for us. Sure. Thanks. Give my regards to your brother, Frank. All right. Well, we'll, just... we'll see you later. Bye. <laughs> Well, listen, he's, he's out of surgery. Things look good. Yeah. yeah, except for Serena. Cops will handle her. Yeah, well, as far as Scott's concerned, he has friends. We're looking out for him, so... Does this... Does this mean you're still going to leave poor Charles? Dr. Wexler, your father's prognosis is good. Aside from splenic damage, he has no other internal injuries. We expect him to make a full recovery. Thank you. I also came to inform you that I will be accepting the post of chief resident. I look forward to working with you. 
This is my official first duty. Assignments will be posted later. Bye. What's my hand on number one? <laughs> I don't know. What is it? I've been called to testify in the Board of Review. In the case of Joseph Parnell Scanlon. Man. Well, at least you weren't named. I thought maybe you would be. You were you're helping suspended. Me. Why didn't you tell me? I just slipped my mind. Oh, yeah? You know what? Hmm. A guy who performs brain surgery with a hand drawn duct tape. You sure have a good bedside manner. This is Joan London. And Charles Gibson. Tomorrow, hit the road. Route 66, that is. Come along as our summer road trip continues. Plus, a new tire promises no more flats. We'll put it to the test on Good Morning America.